what's going on here? I am finally, finally back with talk. Is it cheap? And we're back with episode six, part number one, right here for your Saturday afternoon or morning. Um, Saturday. Um, oh, it just depends on wherever you live, okay? Whatever country, whatever time zone you're in. And we're not going to waste any time. I want this to be, what, around 15 minutes. I want to be shorter because I've got some stuff to do. Now, the first topic we're going to be talking about is a big update on Naomi's injury and her status leading to WrestleMania 33. Okay, let's get into it. Clearly... If WWE officials knew the severity of Naomi's injury last week, they would have forced her to give up the title at the time. Rather than delay the inevitable a week at the time, it was not clear how bad her knee was hurt or when she suffered the injury and there were some within WWE legitimately thought she would be cleared within a week and thus, he, thus the storyline that transpired. There is new information this Thursday, stemming from a report confirming that Naomi suffered the injury during her match with Alexa at the Elimination Chamber. And she did say that on SmackDown Live, when this first SmackDown Live after the Chamber. More specifically, she was hurt during the finish sequence when Naomi hit the, spl the split-legged moonsault to get the victory. Oh, I actually didn't know that. So, this report is telling us where she got injured. It's when she hit that split-legged moonsault and her finishing move to win the title. That's where she injured her knee. As could be expected, considering the writing staff's approach to the angle last week, the injury is considered worse than previously expected. At this time, Naomi's anticipated recovery time is around two months. Wow. Which would keep her out of action for WrestleMania 33 on April the 2nd. Interestingly enough, However, it's believed that Naomi's injury is very similar to the one that Seth Rollins suffered on Raw a couple of weeks ago. So that is just terrible news for Naomi. Rollins is scheduled to appear this coming Monday in an interview to shed more light on his status for WrestleMania. It should be noted that Naomi's WrestleMania status is still not confirmed at this point. But as mentioned, the recovery time would keep her out of if that's deemed accurate. At the very least, she was going to be out for 30 days, unable to defend the championship, so the company stripped her of it. Naomi is an Orlando native, and even though her entering Mania as champion would have created some extra buzz, the belt was not expected to be defended on the card, which is absolutely ridiculous. What? The SmackDown Live Women's Championship was not expected to be defended on the card. That's ridiculous. In my opinion, I thought that Naomi should have won the title at WrestleMania and not go to WrestleMania as the champion, but according to this report, the Women's Championship wasn't even going to be on the line at WrestleMania. So you, are, you want a big match for the Raw Women's Division, the Raw Women's Championship, and that's crap. SmackDown's one is way better, but you don't want your SmackDown Women's Championship on the card. What sense does that make, WWE? What sense does that make? P someone, please, tell me. Tell me. Officials instead were planning on a tag team match. Between Naomi and Becky Lynch against Alexa and Mickey James. Why? Why? Why have the SmackDown Women's Champion be in a tag team match on WrestleMania? At WrestleMania? Why? Obviously, that would be scrapped now too in light of the injury news. But it's unclear if they've decided on a revision yet. It definitely should be noted that the company has been reaching out to former female stars for a WrestleMania appearance. So we'll see if they're used in a match or program with the blue brand women. The feud between Mickey and Becky will seemingly continue as James ran in to attack Becky at the conclusion of the championship match on Tuesday night. Becky addressed um, Mickey James again afterwards on Talking Smack. Um, I watched that. Talking Smack was pretty enjoyable. But that leaves Alexa without a clear opponent heading into WrestleMania. With Naomi out and Nikki Bella set to work with John Cena, The Miz and Maurice. The one other name that has been brought up recently has been Tamina Snooker, who has just been recently cleared to wrestle on the house shows, but her head must be in absolute bits as her father, Jimmy Superfly, passed away last month. So my condolences to her and rest in peace, Jimmy Snooker. So Tamino, I would not like to see a match with Tamino and Alexa Bliss. I really don't know what plans they have for the SmackDown Women's Division. As they said, if, if she wasn't injured, they would have had her in a tag team match and not have the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line at WrestleMania, your biggest event of the year, which you should be trying to make an impact and make it as big as possible. That just makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't know. That's just WWE there for you. 
So the next point here we've got Wow News on The Undertaker. The Undertaker will return at Fast Lane to begin the feud with Roman Reigns. Wow. Oh my gosh. This could be amazing. The Undertaker costing Reigns the match with Strowman could make their feud confusing because it would begin with Undertaker doing something heelish. WWE officials are working hard to get Roman Reigns over as the company's top babyface, but the WWE Universe are more likely to favor The Undertaker over Reigns. Of course! Of course! Do WWE really think you're going to have Roman Reigns chaired more than The Undertaker even after he eliminated him at the Royal Rumble and came out at number 30? Which was just ridiculous. My rap was in the Royal Rumble review. Look, I can check that out. Type it in. Scroll through my channel. Royal Rumble 2017 review. Cairo's TV. Cairo, whatever. It'll probably pop up somewhere. It should be. Officials believe that Reigns defeating Strowman will gain a lot of favor with the WWE Universe and give him the necessary momentum boost to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Reigns vs Undertaker isn't a match the fans are thrilled to see, but it will be remembered as an important match in WWE history because it could go down as the dead man's final match on the grandest stage of them all. Even if The Undertaker continues to wrestle after WrestleMania, the expectation is that it won't be until next year in New Orleans. It's been reported that his health status is questionable at best and he's suffering from major hip issues. Eventually, he's going to need another major hip surgery, but The Undertaker and officials feel that he can handle a big match with Reigns, but that may be all she wrote for his career. How sad that would that be? Apparently, they kept saying that he's in bad shape as well at the Royal Rumble. I didn't see it. I think because he was hobbling. Apparently, he needed a yeah, hip replacement surgery. Undertaker's getting old. Undertaker's getting old. He'll probably return next year, I think. Next year will probably be his last match at WrestleMania 34. Undertaker is getting old. He just needs to go out in a big way. Hopefully next year we do get to see that John Cena versus Undertaker match. John Cena wins the WWE Championship. It depends what brand they're on. And then he just retires. He goes into the Hall of Fame like he should be, guys. Because he's iconic. He's a legend, The Undertaker. There are other angles that officials could use for Reigns versus The Undertaker, but they'll need a good reason to explain why the latter interfered in the match at Fastlane. As of this writing, we don't know how often Undertaker will be on road to build the feud with Reigns, so the build-up to WrestleMania 33 will likely be on Roman Reigns' shoulder. More importantly, WWE needs to decide if Reigns or Undertaker will win in Orlando. Come on, you have to make Undertaker win. If Roman Reigns wins, Roman Reigns is not walking out of that arena alive. He's not walking out alive. He's going to get killed. He's going to get killed. Look, you shoved him down our throats um, enough, but if he defeats Undertaker at WrestleMania clean, then oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Most importantly, Undertaker putting over Roman Reigns on WWE's biggest stage will be a huge moment, especially if the match serves as the dead man's last. He'd be paying it forward into WWE's future, which is the most respectful thing he can do. The fans may reject it initially, but it could realistically improve Reigns dynamic with the universe over the years to know that the Undertaker put him over on his way out. No, 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 <laughs> they just said that will improve Reigns dynamic, more like dethrone Reigns dynamic. If Roman Reigns defeats Undertaker at WrestleMania, he will not walk out of that arena alive. It will not happen. That's not going to improve his thing. You should have Undertaker win the remaining WrestleMania matches he has. That's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And now, the next point. We've got news on Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy's TNA contracts are expiring. Okay? Actually, it says that they are already expired. And are they set for a WrestleMania 33 return? Whoa. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Woo! This is a pretty convenient time for the expiration of their contracts because WrestleMania is right around the corner. If there was ever going to be a time for them to make their return to WWE, there really couldn't be a better time than during the road to WrestleMania, which should be the best build-up to a pay-per-view, but Raw hasn't been showing that. But there actually could be. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, by way of sports key that is reported, the big rumor is that not only will the Hardy Boys return to WWE, but they also will do it at WrestleMania in Orlando. 
It isn't known how they would make their comeback, but there will be a lot of good opportunities. Obviously, the broken gimmick by Matt and Jeff has breathed new life into them over the last year, and they have become the leaders of TNA. If they were to leave the company, it would bring about a gaping hole to a roster that is already in a lot of trouble. They will really improve the Raw or SmackDown Live's tag team division because both of them are a bit looking a bit weird. But Raw's one is terrible. If they went to Raw, that could improve it a bit. And remember, Jeff Hardy and Maaldi can also be used as single competitors as they were before this run in TNA. But I know I might get hit for this. But I think this character, the broken thing, is getting a bit stale. I watched a TNA yesterday, but I don't think I should do a review. I don't think I'm going to gain anything. And I think it's just getting a bit stale. I don't know. They're just not like they're not doing anything in TNA. They're just focusing on other promotions, which could be good for the WWE. And we know the WWE, they're not going to have them go to other promotions to wrestle. While it's always possible that the Hardy Boys could sign or have signed new contracts with Impact Wrestling under staying put, no one knows yet. It would be odd for the company to not announce that they were keeping them, and that is what leads to many that think a new deal has not been agreed upon yet. Matt and Jeff Hardy have a lot of freedom to work with the independent scene and in other promotions while under contract with TNA, and it has made for a lot of fun. Yep, they've had a lot of success around the world. If they sign with WWE, but it's going to come to a halt because everyone knows that simply won't fly with Vince McMahon, which is exactly what I said. Vince is not going to have any WWE superstar go to other wrestling promotions. That's never happening. Currently, the Hardy Boys are telling independent promoters that they cannot book any dates in May or past it, and that is due to not knowing where they will be just yet. A lot is riding on who signs the Hardys, and if TNA loses them, it will be difficult to recover from that blow. WWE wants them, and they are planning on doing whatever it takes to get them. Jeff Jarrett knows he needs to do the same, and I think Vince McMahon will beat him to the chase. If Vince McMahon wants um, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, he'll get them like this. At the click of a finger, Vince will get them. Right now, WWE is on a pretty huge roll, as they have brought in a large number of incredible talents over the course of the last year. NXT is filled with up-and-coming young superstars, while veterans such as AJ Styles... Samoa Joe and Finn Balor have been brought in. The Hardy Boys have ruled TNA Impact Wrestling for a couple of years and losing them would hurt the roster in a huge way. Still, it would be interesting to see Broken Matt and Jeff Hardy back in WWE and that would mean money for Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon knows this. Okay. Okay, now the main event of talk is cheap. It looks like I'm right. I'm going to go for about 15 minutes. The main event of tour is cheap. Wow. It's in the title of this video. It's in the description. It will be in the tags of this video. It is in the title. It is in the thumbnail of this video. One man we're going to be talking about is in the layout of this video. On my left. The W... Well, when he was the WWE champion. AJ Styles. Shinsuke Nakamura is expected to debut next week. On SmackDown Live and face AJ Styles at WrestleMania 33. Oh my gosh. Wow. As we all know, last week on SmackDown Live, there was some controversy at the end of the Battle Royals recap by the official website of WWE. It ended with AJ Styles and Luke Harper trying for the win and setting up a number one contender match next week on Team Blue Show. As reported by Cage Side Seat, that match is expected to be won by Harper as he is likely going to go on to be in the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania 33. Oh my gosh. If you think about it, this is like, oh my gosh, Harper's coming up. But if you really think about it, do we really want to see Harper versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania? Come on, let's be honest. I'm a fan of SmackDown Live. I would like to see that match. Of course, I would love to see Harper versus Bray Wyatt. Obviously, I think it would be a triple threat. Orton versus Wyatt versus Harper. Of course, I want to see that. Of course. But do I want to see it at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship? No. No, leave that as a SmackDown Live exclusive pay-per-view. Not a main event of WrestleMania. I just don't see that. This match vote is also rumored to set up Styles' opponent for the big pay-per-view as well. As recently reported by Inquisitor, Styles was rumoured to face off his SmackDown commissioner, Shane McMahon, in early April. Both plans appear to have been changed, though, and Styles' WrestleMania opponent may not even be on the main roster yet, but he still, he will be by next week. 
434 is reported by former NXT champion, the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura, is set to make his main roster debut next week on SmackDown. It is rumored that he will get involved in the match between Harper and Styles, which will cost AJ the win and set up their battle at WrestleMania. I highly doubt this. I highly doubt this, but this is what it says. If this ends up being true, that bout between Nakamura and Styles could easily steal the entire show and be a match of the year candidate. Of course, apparently these two faced each other before, but I never watched that match, but that was in New Japan Pro Wrestling, I think, at their pay-per-view, their biggest pay-per-view, Wrestle Kingdom, I think, 11 or 10 or something like that. I'm not sure, but they did face each other before, and it was said to be an amazing match. And they'll definitely put on a classic at WrestleMania if this match really happens. Nakamura recently spoke with Yahoo Sports Japan about performing at WrestleMania, and he said he would like to face Styles if the opportunity ever came about. He also kind of took a shot at Styles in regard to his opponent for this year, as transcribed by Chris Charlton. This is what he said. If the opportunity presented itself, I want to do it. AJ doesn't have an opponent yet. I'd like to fill that spot. I've achieved a lot this year, but there's much more to do. I want to make more strides over the next year and show my true ability. Wow. This past Tuesday before the 10 Superstar Battle Royale to determine the number one contender to Bray Wyatt's WWE Championship, Styles responded to Nakamura. How's this? Sorry, but I do have a match at WrestleMania. And that fact... And fact, I'll be headlining WrestleMania after tonight. I love that. He so he's saying that no, because he's going to be winning the Battle Royal. Nakamura wasn't just going to let that one go either. This is what he tweeted. AJ Styles org, choose the best way, bro. At this time, WWE is allowing these two superstars and wrestling legends to go back and forth on social media and not putting a stop to it. If Nakamura is going to be Styles' opponent at the biggest pay-per-view of the year, he will have to move up from NXT very soon, and this program will need to be started right away. WWE never really does anything or allows anything to happen unless they are going somewhere with it. Sure, it may not be right away or it may be far into the future, but if they tease it, there's a reason. Nakamura and Styles mentioning each other recently has led to a lot of speculation and it may be too short of notice, but it is not at all impossible for the former to jump from NXT, make his debut and set up a WrestleMania 33 five-star match in the making. Huge news on Nakamura main, um, on going to the main roster next week on SmackDown Live and facing off against AJ Styles and we've covered all the news on Talk Is Cheap episode 6 part number 1 and over here, I forgot. I'm going to be doing a show with Tyler Keller show. Um, it's going to be called Direct Smack. I think we're planning to do it every Tuesday. It will be live. Direct Smack is called. We could talk about anything in the WWE, anything about wrestling, or we could talk about anything as well, other than that, any big news. So we're going to be doing a live show. I've already tried to set up for it. I made a layout as well. As well, if you missed my video yesterday about the prank call, I prank called Carphone Warehouse. It was pretty funny. Just wasted their time. You make sure to check that out. That will be in the card's description of this video so you're able to check it out. Please leave a thumbs up and tell me if you enjoyed this video because it allows me and it motivates me to make more brilliant content for you all. And if you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.